appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning and, and uh, share some ideas uh, with you as part of the research that we have completed uh, on contract uh, with, uh, with MnDOT. Uh, the Tourism Center, if, if you're not familiar with us, we're a unit of the uh, uh, University of Minnesota, and we do research and education work uh, related to tourism and tourism development uh, in Minnesota. Uh, and certainly transportation has, has a major uh, part of, of that research and that, and that education. What I want to share with you this morning are some uh, thoughts and some results of some research again, that, that we have completed and, and are in the process of completing uh, uh, for MnDOT uh, related to quality of life, and particularly as it relates to the transportation system. And certainly, as, as, as we've just talked about, quality of life is, is a very subjective uh, kind of thing. It's a real squishy uh, kind of concept, and in our research, we did not try to define uh, quality of life in any uh, way, shape, or form. We were interested in finding out what people uh, thought uh, were indicators of their quality of life. And so in our research, it, it uh, is a three-phase uh, research project. Uh, we did a literature review related to quality of life, and particularly quality of life in, in transportation. Uh, we did a piece of qualitative research in, in, in the area of, of focus group uh, research, and that's the uh, piece of the research that I will be discussing. And then we're in the process of doing some quantitative research also related to quality of life. So there are multiple definitions, uh, and, and uh, uh, certainly that will be part of your discussion, I suspect, uh, as you get into the small groups today. And so we're using quality of life as kind of a framework here as, as, we, as we visit with people. So there are two aspects of the, of the research that, that I want to touch on this morning. And primarily I want to talk about the indicators uh, that people used when they were discussing their own quality of life. And then secondly, if we have, have time at the end, to kind of t uh, just touch briefly on some of the more specific transportation-related indicators. So as I mentioned, we used, uh, for the qualitative research, we used uh, uh, the focus group uh, methodology, and uh, we had 25 focus groups uh, that were uh, separated by geography, by age, and by ethnicity. And this was a statewide uh, uh, focus group uh, project and effort uh, that took us uh, from southeast Minnesota to northwest Minnesota and, and beyond. I want to share with you uh, these kind of broad indicators of, of quality of life. And these are broad indicators that I think uh, uh, MnDOT has found in, in their own research uh, prior to the, the pilot groups, pilot focus groups that they did last year. Um, and these are broad indicators of quality of life that we found also, not only in our literature review uh, of, of quality of life, but also in, in the focus groups uh, that, that we conducted. People kind of talked about things related to these broad domains. And uh, so what I'd like to do uh, in, in the time that I have with you this morning is to kind of go behind the curtain a little bit on, on some of these topics and these domains and, and kind of try to give you a sense for what people were, were talking about as they talked about education and health and local amenities. What, what do some of these things mean uh, for them? as they thought about and talked about their quality of life. Certainly in terms of education, almost universally people said, good schools are important to my quality of life. And that, you know, in, in, a, in and of itself uh, demands some, some further uh, probing. Uh, because what, what makes up a good school? 
Um, and so we probed that a little bit more, and people were, were talking about, well, quality. We want a quality school, and not quality just in terms of curriculum, but quality in terms of the whole range of activities that a school offers. Uh, uh, all of the social activities as well as the academic activities of a school. Uh, and as, we, as, we, as people talked about their quality of life in terms of education, they almost always focused on K-12 education. Uh, and so we had to probe that a little bit more and to say, you know, well, what, you know, what is the range of, of your interest and in indicators of quality of life in terms of education? And so once we started probing that, certainly higher education became a part of that discussion as well. Uh, and as we talked about higher education, uh, people weren't so concerned about quality. They, as they assumed quality in higher education. They were concerned about cost. And as indicated by one participant in our, in our focus group who said, higher education costs continue to rise. Kids are graduating with lots of debt. And so there was this kind of concern about where, where are we going in our education system? How are we going to be able to afford uh, a college uh, for our kids? Employment and finance. Uh, you know, in, in real estate, you talk about location, location, location. Our focus groups talked about jobs, jobs, jobs. And this was very interesting in our focus groups because we had a number, uh, I wouldn't say a number, but several people uh, who participated in our focus groups who were either unemployed themselves, they had lost a job, or someone in their family had lost a job and were, and were looking for work. And they also had children who had graduated from college and were now living at home because they hadn't been able to find a job. So certainly cost of living, uh, was a concern and an indicator, uh, perhaps in, in some way a detractor from their quality of life. Um, and a lot of concern related to long-term financial security. And obviously, I, I mean, I think that uh, is, is apparent in, in, in over the last couple of years uh, during the recession. As, as a person from Mankato uh, commented, well, when we first moved here, there were a lot of help wanted signs. Now, not so many, uh, which was kind of an indicator of, of that sense of, of concern about their quality of life and, and the sustainability of their quality of life. I've kind of uh, condensed environment and kind of recreation slash recreation here, but Certainly, environment is an important indicator of people's quality of life in this state. Uh, nature, green space, uh, parks, uh, people in this state are pretty serious about their parks. Uh, and uh, certainly held up parks and green space as an important part of their quality of life. Uh, trails kind of go along with that, and when we probed that further, uh, hiking, biking, uh, walking trails, uh, multimodal trails. Um, and certainly we found in terms of trail use, uh, biking uh, very much a part of people's quality of life. And not only in terms of leisure use of biking, but now biking as part of a transit system. Uh, more and more people in, in, in our focus groups discussed uh, their use of, of biking as a way to get to work or a way to get downtown or a way to, to move from place to place, not just going out for, for a, a, a weekend ride. Uh, I think you can see in, in this quote from one of our focus group participants kind of a sense of their, of their values of, of the, that, that quality of life that they felt was important to them. A uh, person from Alexandria said, we came here on vacation and decided this is where we wanted to raise our children. 
to me, that, that says a lot about a person's and in that individual's sense of place and a sense of value for raising their families. Health, uh, certainly health is a major indicator of, of quality of life, not only in terms of medical facilities and services, but access and affordability. That kind of that public policy issue we've been debating in our country now for the last couple of years. Uh, access and affordability. Uh, uh, as someone said in Bemidji, good health is the key to everything else uh, as an indicator of their quality of life. Uh, this was a, a, a broader, uh, this kind of individual psychic uh, need uh, in, uh, quality was, was a, a, a broad theme that we found. Um, people expressed this in a variety of ways, uh, a need for free time, uh, peace, serenity, uh, trying to reduce the, the complexity of our lifestyle a little bit, uh, pride in our community is very interesting. I think in, in every community that we visited and, and had these focus groups, people were proud of their communities and said, this is the perfect place to live. No matter if it was, you know, Rochester or Mankato or Alexandria, Bemidji, didn't make any difference. This was the place I want to live. Um, and so, uh, there's this sense of, 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 of community pride and community welfare uh, being a part, an important part of how I define my quality of life. Local amenities, uh, certainly uh, 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 local government services as well as private sector services, uh, access to those services, and uh, certainly shopping. Uh, we, we know from tourism research that shopping is now the number one thing that people like to do when they come to Minnesota. Um, so uh, having access to a lot of amenities is an important indicator of, of uh, a person's quality of life. Spirituality was an important indicator of people's quality of life. Uh, not only in terms of their faith activities, but their church, seeing their church as a part of their social network. Uh, and as, as a person in St. Cloud said, my faith and church community are very important to me. And we found that uh, to be an important indicator of people's quality of life. Certainly, as, as was indicated at the beginning and, and as part of the introduction today, transportation came up in a variety of ways, but it came up uh, certainly as a means to an end as opposed to an end in itself. But certainly transportation in and of itself is an important indicator of, of a person's quality of life in terms of, of how, how long you have to be sitting in traffic, uh, you know, the, the quality of, of, of the public transportation that's available, um, and, and safety issues as well. Uh, so uh, a person from Minneapolis said, I feel I have to live close to my job because of traffic and bus schedules. So certainly transportation is an important piece of a person's quality of life. We then, you know, we, we asked people, and as I said, we did not have any definitions. We did not put any definitions of quality of life out there. We just said, you know, what, what, what are some indicators of your quality of life? So we went from this broad perspective of quality of life, and then we brought it down a notch to say, how does the transportation system impact your quality of life? And we came up with seven different themes or domains here as well. And I don't have time to go through all of those, but I just want to give you a, 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 a sense for uh, a couple of these transpor transportation related themes. Particularly, a lot of discussion w uh, was in this area of access and mobility. A lot of these results, again, differed by age groups. Uh, we had three different age groups in, in our focus groups. 
uh, a younger, middle, and older age group. And some of these themes differed by age, as you might expect. They also different, differed by geography in terms of metro versus outstate. Some indicators were more important uh, uh, to uh, one or the other group. Um, and some viewed uh, transportation-related indicators as, as uh, contributors to their quality of life. Other people determined that these transportation indicators were actually detractors to their quality of life. So just in terms of giving you a, a, just a, a feel or a sense for some of the things that we uh, uncovered in, in, our, in our focus groups, uh, people talked about access. And we're using, in, in the analysis piece here, the uh, definition of accessibility from the Center for Transportation Studies. And these are all kinds of comments that people made as they were uh, discussing transportation as a part of their quality of life. And we w went across several different uh, modes of transportation, for example. Public transportation, lots of, of discussion, lots of mixed feelings about uh, public transportation in the state and the quality of public transportation as it relates to their quality of life. Uh, but uh, you get an idea of some of the sense of what people were saying about transportation, access to transportation as a positive, as a contributor to their quality of life. You also get some sense for what people were saying in terms of access to transportation as a detractor to their, to their quality of life. And in some ways, it, were, it was two sides of the same coin. But in public transportation, for example, you can see some of, the, some of the questions, some of the issues that people raised in terms of their quality uh, or their access to public transportation. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the, the whole idea of light rail has, has was very positively expressed throughout all, almost all of outstate Minnesota. Uh, it is fairly positively expressed also in, in the metro Minnesota, uh, in, in the metro area, uh, but not quite as universally uh, accepted as, as, uh, as in, as in uh, outstate. So you get some sense here of of what people were saying about their, their, their uh, accessibility. I kind of liked uh, this comment. I personally don't want to give up my car, but I don't understand why somebody else wouldn't. <laughs> Gee whiz. We did the same thing with mobility, contributors, and detractors. And then finally, so a couple of quotes that you get a sense for uh, uh, with mobility. We did the same thing with all of the other sections, uh, se uh, themes as well. So basically what we are trying to do here is to get some sense of what people were saying about my quality of life, what are indicators of my quality of life, and then how does the transportation system impact my quality of life. And that's the, the focus group research that we have completed for the Department of Transportation at this point. Thank you. Great. We do have, we do have some time for questions, and we've got a, a microphone. So again, when you ask a question, if you could uh, give your name um, before, you, before you ask the question. So questions for Kent. Hi, Kent. I'm Ron Hav from Freightmasters. I had a question about the cost of living and the finance side of that. Did yeah. that discussion also include income as well as expense, or was it just focused on expense? Oh, it, it, it had to do with income as well. And, and people's uh, sense for uh, how they have lost income over the last few years and what that has done to their, 
kind of their personal sense of financial security as well as, as the expenses side. Amber Dalman. Amber Dalman, Minnesota Department of Health. Um, when you talked about health, I noticed it was kind of narrowly defined as access and affordable health care. I was wondering if there was an expansion upon that or how the questions were framed within the focus groups. Uh, yes, it, it was much broader than, than just access and affordability, although those were the two pr kind of primary things that, that seemed to jump out. Uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, uh, try to uh, uh, direct that conversation at all. We just kind of took what, what comments people were saying. And um, the, uh, the, the whole discussion on health care uh, ran the gamut from uh, uh, how, how often I can get in to see my doctor to the cost of insurance and whether I can get insurance. And so it, it was much broader than just access and affordability. Can you, I'm Hector Garcia with uh, Latino Affairs Council, one of uh, four state councils. And um, you mentioned that uh, your focus groups were diverse geographically by age and ethnicity. Did that diversity show up in the results of the group's uh, input? Uh, only, you know, interestingly enough, I think only to the extent of, uh, particularly in the area of public transportation, uh, here in the metro area, uh, we uh, and and in terms of ethnicity, we had four different uh, uh, groups. Uh, uh, we did a group of, of uh, Native Americans in, in Bemidji, uh, uh, Latinos in in Wilmer, uh, and then a group of Asian and African uh, African Americans here in in the Twin Cities. And certainly, uh, the, the two Twin Cities groups uh, were more heavily dependent upon public transportation than the other groups. Uh, but even in uh, uh, it, the two outstate uh, Latino as well as Native American groups uh, were concerned about the uh, ability to get public transportation. So public transportation was an issue. Um, I think just, just generally, um, Certainly, uh, jobs and the economy uh, and the ability to to get to work uh, w was was certainly an, a, a difference as well. Are you familiar with the study that was done by Met Council around 2000? Uh, I forget. It was called 2030 Plan or something to that effect. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry? Right, and um, within that uh, plan, I remember in 2000, uh, trying to see whether the Med Council had uh, taken into account the great need for mobility on the part of um, uh, groups that don't, don't have a, a lot of resources to get to their jobs. And mm -hmm. at that time in 2000, uh, it wasn't one of the factors that they considered mm -hmm. in spite of the huge demographic growth of those same populations. So I'm wondering whether in your uh, study uh, that was considered it was not considered specifically, no. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any final question? One, we've got time for one more, yes. Our crimes <coughs> with City of Golden Valley. <coughs> Did anything ever come up with uh, uh, access to broadband or access to uh, cable or internet access? Um, yes, uh, you know, just in, in terms of uh, uh, their ability particularly in, in greater Minnesota, uh, the ability to get access to broadband uh, and, and certainly uh, the ability to, uh, as broadband becomes more available, that, that would, they perceive that would um, improve or, or be a contributor to their quality of life. Tim, yes. 
Joe, do you have the microphone for Tim? Thank you, Tim. That I'm just curious, when I look at the results and the modes that are covered, air, car, accessibility, mobility, but what's glaringly missing for me is freight and the contribution 